from the Messiah Valley. Welcome to the Land of Enchantment and Aggie Memorial Stadium. Week zero college football has returned and we've got Wyoming and New Mexico State to kick things off from here in Las Cruces. And with that, we say good evening and East Shroff alongside former Longhorn Ahmad Brooks. They've just taken the field. It's getting loud here at Aggie Memorial. Aggie told you it's an anticipated season opener. Well, when they're that loud, we do have to wait for them. It's for zero. College football is back. And for the Wyoming Cowboys, they're looking to build off of back-to-back eight-win seasons. They had a quarterback, John Allen, who was the seventh pick in the NFL draft. They've got to find a way to replace him. Sam, this is a program on the rise. What's the next step? Well, it's winning a Mountain West Conference title. And by doing that, that could lead to them being the group of five representative in the New York Six Bowl. Head coach Craig Ball has put a championship culture in place. That starts with a power running game and an outstanding defense. Despite not getting the numbers out of their rushing attack a year ago, they look to improve tonight. But it's a this defense where NFL talent is littered all over it. Starting with Carl Ander Granderson, their defensive end. He can do it all. Stop the run and rush the passer. And right down the middle, their strong safety, Andrew Wingert. He's special, intuitive player. And his comrade in the back end, safety number six, Marcus Epps. He's a ball hawk. And last but not least, Johanna Gaffan, right up the middle, runs stuffer, and he is hard to move. Now, this might be the best defense in the group yes. of five. Meanwhile, New Mexico State played in a bowl game last year for the first for the since 1960. But now they find themselves as a college football nomad. nomad out of the Sun Belt Conference. It's life as an independent, and every Saturday is an audition. Well, they find themselves in this odd space, if you will. But this is the type, this stage to prove on a national level that they are here to stay. And Coach Martin said the hardest part now is sustaining that same success. They're looking to start that tonight. Roddy Jones will be down will be field tonight. Roddy, what's the buzz here at Aggie Memorial Stadium? Man, the buzz is incredible in front here in Niche, and the players have told us that it's been incredible off the field as well. After the success of last year, they're being recognized, and it's different for them after the success that they had. And Anish, they have decided to sell tickets for $3 to get fans in the stands, and it has worked. People are excited, and it's not just because it's week zero for college football. It's because they're excited about this. what this New Mexico State team is going to bring. The fans here are excited, we're excited, and so are fans across the country. College football has returned. New Mexico State won the toss. The Aggies defer, so Wyoming will receive. Dylan Brown to kick it off and back deep, deep. Tyler Hall and Nico Evans. And the Cowboys of Wyoming will bring it out to the 25-yard line. And the big question for Wyoming, how do you replace Josh Allen? 16 wins in two seasons as the Cowboys starting quarterback. He was more than just the numbers. His head coach, Craig Bull, told us Allen gave this team a belief that they could compete at the highest seed at the high. And Josh Allen drafted more for projection and promise production, but he was the seventh overall pick in the draft, and his successor will be the redshirt freshman from Elk Grove, California, Tyler Vanderwall, 6'4", 220. He's got that prototypical quarterback build. And on first and on, he hands the ball off. It's Nico Evans for a gain of about a yard. Evans, a fifth-year senior from Los Angeles. 
And for the Wyoming Cowboys, it'll be find their offensive rhythm. They want to control the clock. This is a power rushing attack, and tonight that's what they're looking to do. Back to Evans on second down. Maneuvers his way across the 30. And it sets up a third and short. And this is what the Wyoming coaches talked to us about, Ahmad. Getting a young quarterback and a new quarterback into third and manageable. Well, I just talked about that offensive rhythm, this rhythm on track. Third and short yardage situations. They really do rely on their guys up front. In particular, the A-gaps. They like the power. They like the zone. In situations like this, this is where Army football really shows its stuff. Back to Evans one more time, and he ran into a roadblock. Fourth down. Outstanding defense. And that, and you start off if you are the Aggies. Terrell Hanks, get used to the name. The strong side linebacker, wide back, skinny there, squeeze the play. Running to the football, also on the tackle, middle linebacker, Javon Ferguson. Excellent stop and three and out to start the game. Tim Zaleski to punt it away for Wyoming. O.J. Clark back deep for New Mexico State. And we get a timeout. Aggies call a timeout. 13.05 to go here in this opener in this quarter. Wyoming three and out on its opening possession. And this was a Wyoming offense, even with a first-round pick at quarterback last year, that struggled offensively a season ago. Head coach Craig Bowl told us directly they were not pleased with their numbers. And part of that was they had seven different offensive line arrangements. That's one thing. But on top of that, this was an offense that just couldn't quite get clicking. So they went in the offseason. One of the main goals for this man right here was to reestablish this ground game. Ground, starting back to his days at Nebraska, moving on to North Dakota State. He hangs his hat on that power run game. Okay. Ashmouth football has been the staple for Craig Bowl. It's been a successful blueprint. He won three consecutive championships in Fargo before coming to Laramie. New Mexico State and some of the Wyoming players stopped like there was a whistle. And Clark is able to bring it out across the 35, a 17-yard return after a 46-yard punt. This is an Aggies offense that returns eight players, but the three that, that they're significant ones. Larry Rose, the third, all he did was leave school as the second leading rusher in New Mexico State history. Jaleel Scott. First Aggie drafted in five years. Went to the Ravens in the fourth round, and Tyler Rogers was a four-year starter at quarterback. He's gone, and his successor will be Matt Romero, junior college transfer from the San Diego area. Go. Little speed option, it's Jason Huntley. And he tornadoes his way to the 45-yard line, tackled by the safety Marcus Epps. Roddy, your keys when the Aggies have the ball. Downs, this is a tempo offense, so to tire out this defensive line, they're going to have to get first downs and keep Wyoming on the field. Back to Huntley again. And Roddy he stopped right at the line of scrimmage. And Roddy, that's exactly why they won't be able to do that, because this is a dominant defensive line. And if they can control the line of scrimmage, um, the New Mexico State Aggies, whether that's when they're passing the football or rushing it, if the Cowboys can get some type of pressure and push, this game's over. First pass by Romero, and that play blown up behind the line of scrimmage. It's Marcus Epps, part of that outstanding safety tandem. He is a three-time captain. They rely on him not for just his playing ability, but his leadership. And what you see, this is a senior that is now starting to read the football well. He anticipated that play, got on it, and a nice open field tackle to, to cause this defense to get off the field. So both teams go three and out. Everyone getting the cobwebs out early. Week zero, first game of the season. Peyton Theisler will punt. And Austin Conway, the deep man for Wyoming. Timeout, Wyoming. And Their now first Wyoming will call a timeout. So both teams have burnt a timeout. 
here in the first few minutes of the game. It's called first game jitters. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, and Roddy can attest to this, your first ball game of the season, so much anticipation goes into the week. You're tired of beating up on your teammates, and then you come out here, there's an actual crowd out here, and so your heart starts racing, and you make plays like that. I'm sure both of these teams will settle in towards the middle part of the first quarter, and then it'll be back to football. Now this is a Wyoming team that two years ago played in the Mountain West championship game. They were 5-1 and one in conference at one point last year. Then Josh Allen got hurt. They lost two straight games before bouncing back in their bowl game against Central Michigan. And for New Mexico State last year, first bowl appearance in 57 years. Flag is down. Conway fields inside his own 10-yard line. Nowhere to go. He's ambushed right there after a 50-yard punt. But a penalty marker is down back at the 40. Big 12 officiating crew today. Our referee is Brad Van Vark. Illegal formation on the offense. That five yard penalty will be from the previous spot. We'll replay fourth down. So New Mexico State will kick once again and another chance for Conway. formation somebody's got to be off the line of scrimmage there once again early season jitters Conway waits at his own 10 yard line now moves up a couple of yards this is a shorter punt and it's out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Let's see where this ball is spotted. Wyoming will take over at its own 40. Tonight, week zero, Wyoming out of the Mountain West and New Mexico, a newly minted independent looking for a home. And you know, we start to look at geography. The Mountain West potentially could be a fit down the road for the Aggies. Out of the eye formation. On the ground here on first down. That's the redshirt freshman from Illinois, Xavier Valade. Wyoming is going to use running back by committee tonight, and they are looking for somebody to take hold of that possession or position. This was a team that prides itself on running the football. They did it so well two years ago with Brian Hill. Struggled in that department last year. On second down, back to Valade. Across midfield into New Mexico State territory and a first down after a gain of 11. And yeah, Valade has worked on his body composition, has added bulk, and you saw it there finishing off that run. And also in the backfield, they lined up with two guys. They put 
Rahib Jr., uh, Rahib Ishmael Jr. in the backfield, number 17. Yes, that is the son of Rocket. That's Rocket Ishmael Jr. Dad was the Heisman runner-up in 1990, one of the most electrifying players in the history of college football. And there is Rocket Jr. on the screen, takes it out to the 40-yard line, a nice pickup on first down, setting up second and three. And that was good timing. Great play there from Vanderhall, and then you see Ishmael Jr. He's explosive once he gets the catch. Six foot, 186. He's ready. Carrollton, Texas. They play good football there. Juco transfer, Cisco College out in West Texas, looking tonight to make a name for himself. Back in '90, his dad missed out on the Heisman, losing to Ty Detmer. Play action. Vanderwall on the run, dumps it off. And that's Tyree Mayfield, who's the third tight end, picking up and up for a first down. And that play action pass, Roddy, is such a big part of this Wyoming offense. Because of the success that they were having with the outside zone prior to that, it was a great job of setting it up, outside zone, outside zone, then play action off of it to loosen up that backside to give Xavier Valade some cutback lanes. Out of the two tight end set, Valade again. Plunges forward across the 35 for a pickup of two. Now the challenge for this Wyoming offense from the coaching staff was to collectively be better. They thought two years ago, they had a lot of weapons, and Josh Allen put up big numbers. Four players on that offense now in the NFL. Last year, Allen had to do too much and this year they just want the supporting cast to rise to help the young man at quarterback Vanderwall. Conway motions. Valade straight ahead and he is gobbled up by the fifth year senior Deshante Lloyd. Outstanding play recognition. They tried to bring a wide receiver across the field to open up that defense. Conway coming across the D-line. Great gap control and integrity there on the part of Lloyd as they now force him in a third long situation. This is not what the Cowboys like to be in. Their favorite targets on the outside edge are Austin Conway. Along with Avante Cox, who is the roommate for Vanderwall. Let's see if New Mexico State brings pressure. Top five nationally in sacks last year. No blitz, Nico Evans on the screen. And Evans able to pick up a first down inside the 25. To your point, excellent recognition from the quarterback. He saw that they had numbers dropped. He checked down to the outside back, and that's what allowed him to pick up the, the first down here. He recognized it quick enough to get it into the hands of the running back. He's three of three to start today, and that might have been his best pass yet. And Ahmad, they've done a great job of making everything that they're asking Tyler Vanderwall to do, making it manageable. Short passes to keep the chains moving. Evans in the backfield, two tight ends. Play action. Vanderwall with time, dumps it off, Mayfield again. Inside the 10 yard line, first and goal, Wyoming. And there is a flag down. Illegal block in the back. Number 81 of the offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. Austin Fort, the senior tight end from Gillette, Wyoming. Now right there, easy call. So instead of a first and goal, it will set up a first and 11. Fort in his second stint with Wyoming actually transferred out of the program before coming back. Evans bursting up the middle, has some room. Evans stays on his feet, into the end zone. Wyoming on the board. Right. 
His Twitter handle is next up, Nico. And this is a young man who has been waiting and waiting for his opportunity. Look at the push there from the, the offensive line that is starting three redshirt freshmen tonight. They got the push they deserve. And Nico doing what he's been doing all spring camp and fall, making plays. The kick is good. Wyoming on its second possession of this 2018 season. Marching downfield and Evans providing the early punctuation. ESPN College Football, brought to you by your local Lexus dealer. Experience the Golden Opportunity Sales Event for a limited time. Mont Brooks, you were you were hanging out with cattle. Dude, I am from West Texas. Yes, I am. I love the rodeo and um, some good bull riding with yourself. Royce Caldwell looking for room. And he goes down at the five-yard line. There is a penalty marker. Receiving team number eight, building will be half the distance to the goal at the end of the run. First down, New Mexico State. Well, that's the second special teams penalty against New Mexico State. We saw the first one impact field position and enable Wyoming to work with a short field and score. They've got to calm down. Now they're stubbing their toe, and now you put your offense in a horrible position. Now they're backed up against their goal line, especially with an aggressive defensive line that likes a four-man front. You'd anticipate getting some type of run pressure here or pass pressure with a blitz if you're this Cowboys defense. So New Mexico State will begin inside its own five. Romero hands off to Huntley and another flag. Ball start, offense number 88. Half the distance to the goal, still first down. That's Xander Yarborough and early game, early season jitters. Hey, it's week zero for all of us. Ahmad usually wears a bow tie, but <laughs> brought the wrong one, didn't fit the color scheme. Yeah, I, it, it didn't. I'm, I'm still a little upset about it. Romero, another flag down, in trouble. That one is dropped by Jonathan Boone, second down, but we do have another penalty, and if that's holding in the end zone, that could be a potential safety. Flag's not in the end zone, but you're absolutely right that the penalty did occur in the end zone. Personal foul, leg whip, number 78 in the offense. That penalty has been declined, second down. Brian Trujillo, the guilty party. 
will set up second and long. Head coach Doug Martin, who you just saw, calls the plays. Not happy with his offense right now. Here's Huntley. They got him in the end zone for a safety. Carl Granderson, who led the Mountain West in TFL's last season, coming up with a defensive stop. This young man is special. And I think where his game has developed the most throughout his career is being strong against the run. He came in very speedy and had tremendous speed on the edge, but this is where his game has developed the most. Fighting off blockers, making plays in the end zone. That is spectacular and a major boost for the Cowboys. What to watch for for me, football is back. Can we just take a moment and say thank you to football? <laughs> thank you. I'm looking for the top football state shakeup. Florida, Texas, and California all with some major changes. And there's an F SEC conference challenger. It's the Big Ten. I think it's the best conference. John off Wally with the catch. Roddy, what are you looking forward to? Sorry, he's having a little technical difficulties on the sideline. It's the week zero jitters, but I'm looking forward to week one. The biggest thing, Willie Taggart's debut. A Labor Day game against Virginia Tech. I want to see what he can do with this Florida State team. Nico Evans. Evans exploding across midfield for a gain of a dozen. And the fifth-year senior out of Los Angeles went to the coaching staff during spring ball and said, listen, what do I have to do to be the guy? He was an afterthought coming into this season. And there were some injuries. There was a player moved from running back to defensive end. And Evans broke camp as number one on the running back depth chart. Yeah, he made some tremendous strides there and that time picked up an excellent block from center Patrick Arnold right in the middle. Five carries, 45 yards already for Evans. Gets it again. Flag down. A gain of about five if it stands. Get Roy Lopez and the penalties have been a big factor early on in this game. Wyoming has been clean. New Mexico State has been sloppy. Yeah, the Aggies are killing themselves, and this is one of the matchups to follow right here. You'll sit in the middle of your screen with the nose guard Roy Lopez taking on Patrick Arnold, the redshirt freshman. And Arnold, who's been working against an outstanding defensive line in practice as a redshirt freshman a year ago, feels like he can handle this moment. Quick screen, Rocket Ishmael Jr. Taken down after a short gain, and what's been impressive on the line of scrimmage, Wyoming came into this game with some injuries up front and some missing pieces. They're starting three redshirt freshmen on the O-line. Amazing, and not only that, but in the eight gaps, that is where they win. It's called power football. The two gaps next to the center on his right and his left, but, but they believe these young men are ready. And in talking to the coaching staff yesterday, I, I found this very interesting. This is the first year in the Craig Bowl area that they have not started a true freshman. So at least these guys have a red shirt under their belt. Wishbone look. It's the true freshman from Fresno, Javon Bigelow. And he stood up with a line of scrimmage by Javon Ferguson, the middle linebacker. This is a New Mexico State team that offensively lost its top passer top rusher and the top receiver defensively they lost Dalton Harrington their top tackler from last year and that Mike linebacker position is an integral part of Frank Spaziani's defense it absolutely is and the crowd is on their feet right now because that man right there likes to heat up the pocket and place landmines all over the field for the quarterback look for them here to bring the blitz 43 sacks a season ago fifth in the FBS for New Mexico State Vanderwall stays perfect now seven for seven and Austin Fort picks up a first down to move the chains Yeah, they went with a four-man rush. They dropped seven back and despite that Tyler Vanderwall still found a hole in this defense I've been impressed with this young man early on what he's been able to do He doesn't have a completion on the day quite yet 
And that's just another prime example. He's picking this defense apart by using his checkdowns and finding space on this defense. Evans on the counter. To the 14-yard line, second down. His coaching staff told us that Vanderwall, when he came to Wyoming out of high school, actually had more physical polish than two quarterbacks who've gone on to be first-round picks that this staff recruited. Josh Allen <laughs> right here in Wyoming and yeah. Carson Wentz during the North Dakota State days. High praise. I'm going to spit my gum out when he said that. Evans again. He's been eating in this first half. A late flag. Evans more rush yards in this first quarter than all of last season. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 94. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. First down. Now, now, this is getting ridiculous, you know, and if you're New Mexico State, this looks like the New Mexico State of old. Um, they, they just kept getting in their way, and they've got the talent now to compete in these types of games. Now it comes down to having the confidence and the execution, which they've been lacking in this first quarter. They've got to get that corrected to have a shot to win this ball game. Bigelow. Not much. Doug Martin, the head coach for New Mexico State, told us this team has to adopt the persona of what he called Butch the One-Eyed Pitbull. <laughs> yeah, it's the neighborhood it's dog that dog. doesn't have a home, <laughs> but you know what? It's going to go to the big mansion, fight the Dobermans, and take their food. That's the attitude he wants to bring to Las Cruces. I love that analogy. Play action, Vanderwall. He's going to run it in. And he's going to be marked out of bounds right at the one yard line. I'd like to see him a little more decisive here on running the football. There is another flag down. Personal foul, Legwick, number 22 of the offense. The 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, replay second down. That's on Nico Evans in the costly penalty, this time against Wyoming. Well, that's definitely a relief for the Aggies because now you get some breathing room. Let's see if we can see it here. That's a close call. I'm not sure if I'd have called. I might have kept my flag in my pocket there. Looked like the defender just did an excellent job of avoiding. Nico is there. He's trying to go low for a chop block. So second and goal. Ball now at the 20-yard line. 11th play of the drive coming. Vanderwall under pressure. Another flag down as Conway got free and took it inside the 10, but a penalty marker back at the 16. Drive of almost six minutes for Wyoming. Illegal crackback block, number 26 of the offense. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. They play second down. So they get Avante Cox, and now you back up another 15 yards, and Wyoming now teetering at the edge of their field goal range where they feel comfortable. So now looking at uh, a potential momentum swing. They had the ball inside the 10-yard line just a couple of plays earlier. Ball on the 31, second and goal. Evans has some running room. And takes it inside the 20, setting up a third and goal. Evans got 12 back. Terrell Hanks on the stop. 
number two for New Mexico State. A big time NFL prospect. We had a chance to chat with him yesterday. He told us how things have changed around this community and this campus. New Mexico State Aggie football players can now walk around proudly with their jerseys on. This defense for the Aggies looking to make a stand as quarter number one comes to an end with Wyoming on top. Last quarter had the ball for almost 13 minutes. <laughs> Scary good. That is the name of the game for the Cowboys. And here you get a chance to see Tyler Vanderwall, who they believe is, is ready for these types of moments. It's a third and long situation. He'll have to make a play with his arm. Vanderwall, eight for eight. Has time, looking for six. And he overthrew Ishmael, fourth down. Excellent route there from Ishmael in the back of the end zone. Just too much juice and not enough touch from Vanderwall. And that's his first incompletion of the day. He's made some outstanding decisions. To watch the, the route here inside left of your screen. Ishmael doing a good job of getting away from Javon Ferguson, and that is not a good matchup. The middle linebacker on Ishmael. 36-yarder by Cooper Roth is good. And Wyoming has scored a touchdown, a safety, and a field goal. 12-0 Cowboys. for LSU. Uh, Anish, I'm just happy Miami's relevant again. I, what, what's the transformation they made this year and now to be back in the conversation in college football, I, I think is good for college football. Yeah, and to that point, you're, you talk about LSU. I think the SEC is no longer, in my opinion, the, the conference to beat anymore. I think from the top to bottom, you look at it, the Big Ten, has now made some serious strides. And you're the not SEC talking about is Alabama. Top heavy. You're looking no, at the Alabama whole. Alabama or Georgia. I, I mean, I think you just go to the Big Ten and you start to look at Michigan State, Michigan, um, Penn State, uh, Wisconsin. There are teams that are relevant in college football that really have a legitimate shot of making the college football playoff. Nothing doing on first down, a loss of a yard. Only two yards on seven plays now for New Mexico State. Roddy, do you have the SEC as your third best conference? I, I do, and you talked about the entirety of the conference. You look at the Big Ten and Ahmad listed off, but he forgot Iowa and Northwestern yep. teams that are going to be super competitive. And then the ACC, I mean, find me a team that you can pick out and say, yeah, that's a definite win in the ACC. It's loaded from top to bottom. This middle is really strong. Romero under pressure. Running around. And he is devoured back at the 10-yard line. Sydney Mala Ulu, who grew up in Seoul, South Korea. That's a loss of 16, and that's a mistake by the quarterback. Well, I, I think the first escape right here, he tries to throw this football away. The minute you come back again where you just left, that's always a problem. And then on the back end, the wide receivers have to then try to separate when the quarterback breaks the pocket. None of that happened. And once again, what are you seeing? A dominant defensive line get after a quarterback making his first start tonight for the Aggies. Yeah, New Mexico State needed a first down. They haven't had the ball in this game. Now third and a mile. Screen pass. Huntley's got great speed. And he's taken down from behind by the ankles. Johanna Gaffon, the D lineman who made 69 tackles last year, <laughs> makes that play upfield. Oh, on one of the fastest players for the Aggies. I mean, I'm telling you, if you are watching Wyoming right now, I know Boise State, Central Florida, Utah State, the Memphis. names are out there, and they're all ranked, all right? But Wyoming, look out for them. They're going to get their chance at Boise State. They're going to get their chance at Utah State. Wyoming's defense is for real, and I believe they've got the best defense, which probably gives them the best chance uh, to make a New Year's Six Bowl. Austin Conway to return the punt. Now, they might have the best defense in the group of five. I'm with you there. The Legit. offense will be the question mark. But they've answered some of those questions early, and they'll get another chance when we come back.
six. For the Mexico State Coaches Show featuring head football coach Doug Martin. Wyoming head coach Craig Bowl believes in running the football and stopping the run and that philosophy took root during his days at Nebraska when he played for Tom Osborne and then later coached for Tom Osborne he would also serve as defensive coordinator at Nebraska under Frank Solich he took that same philosophy to Fargo North Dakota and turned the bison not bison bison and do an FCS dynasty that won six of the last seven titles, three under Craig Bowl. He went to Wyoming, a program that was downtrodden, down in the dumps at the time, and he's been the architect of that rebuild, back-to-back -back eight win seasons in the Mountain West Championship game two years ago. Produced another first-round quarterback in Josh Allen, and right now they, again, appear to have a championship defense about Wide open downfield, Austin Fort. Play action to perfection. Outstanding play call, number one. You catch the defense off guard. They're expecting first down run. You come out with heavy dose of play action. It starts with the outside zone. Excellent fake there from Vanderwall, setting his feet. And Austin Fort. Since spring football has now become an option to stretch the field. They love his athleticism. He's the first tight end out, but they're going to use two, three tight end sets. They love doing it, and really, you dupe the defense once you can get into the running game and be successful as they have so far. Avante Cox in motion. Instead, a run straight up the gut. A short gain of two by Validay to go back to Fort. He came to Wyoming as a quarterback. They moved him to tight end. He didn't like it, so he went the junior college route. Didn't stay there very long. Came back to Wyoming as a walk-on. This time, said, okay, I'll play tight end. And he's become one of the better tight ends in the Mountain West. Well, Craig Bowl is a guy to trust. That This is not his first rodeo at um, seeing a player and placing them in the right position. Valade searching for some room, using a little patience. Get right back to the line of scrimmage. It sets up a third down. And, oh, boy, this is a big play for this New Mexico State defense. You can hold Wyoming to a field goal attempt here. You feel like you're still in the game. I know it's early, but the Aggies have not generated anything when they've had the ball. And Wyoming bringing in some of their speeches on the outside edge, taking out tight ends and opting for a few wide receivers. And Vanderwall tonight, only one incompletion, making his first stop for the Cowboys. And you can see why this young man won the job this past spring. Vanderwall steps up, takes a hit, delivers downfield. Incomplete, he wanted Josh Harshman, his second to tight end. And Roth will come on for a field goal attempt of about 40. Took a shot, standing in that pocket. Ferguson coming through. 
And you'll see the shot here at the end of this play. Vanderall, nice job of avoiding stepping into the pocket. It's got to be clean right up the middle of that pocket. So quarterback can. Ferguson adding on a late blitz, forcing the Cowboys to a field goal attempt. It'll be a 38-yarder officially. And the kick is good. Wyoming tacks on three more. And the Cowboys now with a 15-0 lead on the road. Just the second meeting all time between these two schools. Cowboys in control. 15 minutes already, and here we are. Plenty of time to play in the first half. Huntley takes a knee in the end zone. New Mexico State will now take it out to the 25. And Ahmad, if there is one saving grace for the Aggies early, it's still a two-score game. Well, the game hasn't been close on the stat sheet. And you're absolutely right, Amish. And here's a team that, if you're Doug Martin, you step into that huddle and you tell the guys, hey, let's reset, let's start over, and let's get something going here. If you go down and you drive here, and, and, and especially if you could put some pressure on this uh, Wyoming secondary and avoid this dominant defensive line, you're back in this ball game. They're 15 points down. Uh, now they need to make a move. Against a four-man rush, Huntley out of the backfield. And he is tripped up. Just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Second down, and Ken, the struggle is real, Roddy, in terms of getting positive yardage and moving the chains. Well, I like that play coming out, though. Let Matt Romero get a completion. Let his receivers feel the ball in their hands because it's going to take some confidence building. This Wyoming team is making everything difficult. Rushing four. This is Romero. Design quarterback run. And he is about a yard and a half away from New Mexico State's first first down of the game. That might be the way to get the Cali boy, Matt Romero, going. The junior from Oceanside. He's a lot more athletic than you think. Now, I don't think his best asset is running the football, but you see here he's athletic enough to make some things happen with his feet. Now can he make it with his arm on third down? Third down, speed option. Huntley engulfed back at the 30. Wyoming all over that. And three and out for the Aggies again. That's what happens with that tempo. Sometimes when you rush into the next play, it allows the defense to get into what they're doing well and fly to the football. And there, <laughs> you saw it, this defense, they can do it all. The defensive line is dominant. And that time they bring in their specialist, their pass rusher, number 42, Kevin Prosser, with an excellent job there on the tackle. I've been super impressed with the team speed of this Wyoming defense, especially on the defensive line. Everything going east and west, they've been able to rally to and stop before it got started. Not many group of five teams have two NFL D linemen like Wyoming. Conway. And he pinballs across the 20 to the 23-yard line, a 55-yard punt, a return of eight, and boy, Rinse and repeat, New Mexico State goes three and out, and then Wyoming goes on a long clock consuming drive. It's been Craig Bowles' formula since his days as the head coach at North Dakota State, and that formula has worked in Laramie, it's working tonight. Well now your question is, what is this, this Aggies defense going to do? They are dog tight. <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been on in games as a defender where your offense can't get anything going and you're back out on the field. You don't even have time to make adjustments on the sideline. And so now they're back out. They haven't had success. This offense has run the ball on them up and down the field. And now you're looking to your coaching staff. Here's where your leaders have to step up. And one of the main things that Doug Martin said about this team, he says, we lost so much that now who's the, going to be the guy? Is it Terrell Hanks, who's one of the captains to step up, make a play, and change the course of this ball game? Because it's about to get out of hand if Previous they don't. play is under further review. They're going to look at that last play. And Roddy, you watch Wyoming run their offense, pro-style offense, multiple tight ends, a fullback. Now, this used to be the norm in football everywhere. Now it's an outlier. Does it present a competitive advantage 
to play smash mouth football these days. It absolutely does. Every coach around the country will tell you the way you get better playing a particular scheme or a particular style is by playing against it. So when you, like New Mexico State was, when you're in the Sun Belt where you have spread offenses all over the place, when you have an air raid, up-tempo offense that you're practicing against every day in the spring and summer, when you go against a Smash Mouth team, it's a different feel, and you don't know how your team is going to react until they get out there on the field. Now we're told they're going to review this play looking at a potential targeting foul. Was there forcible contact above the shoulders to the head and neck area? And remember, if you make that kind of play on a defenseless player and a block in the back against a defenseless player, you can call targeting. And of course, these days, as they've amended the targeting rules over the years, the replay booth can call for a review to see if, they're if there's targeting. And that's a defenseless player. It's a blindside block. Was it forcible contact? But, well, there's no doubt that there was helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. Here, here's the issue that I have with this rule, and I love that the game is trying to become safer. But when you have a taller blocker or a taller defender trying to block or tackle a smaller guy, listen, the math doesn't add up. And unless you have knee bend and you're able to get lower, oftentimes you make contact high. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened there. There was obviously contact, but I think when in reviewing this rule, if I were presenting something to Rogers Redding and the rest of the committee that makes these rules, I mean, you see it there, he's clearly blocking a smaller defender. Now, at what point is that a judgment call? And he, he bends his knees, he's getting low. He's trying to go in the proper position, he's trying to go with the shoulder, and you see contact with the head. This is a very difficult call to make that uh, one of the best officiating crews at right out of the Big 12 has a hard decision to make. And there has been added emphasis on was the contact forcible? And I think that's something you look at here call. too. And I, and I think it's also a discretion call. And though they want to say that in blanket and say it, it looks the same, officials are human. So the human element of the game that, that goes from one official to the next. And so um, this is something that, you know, and this is going to be the conversation in football now that this rule has also um, taken hold there in the NFL. And you're taught to get that head in front so you don't commit a block in the back. But you know, the penalty is severe for a targeting call, which is an ejection. And if it happens in the second half of the game, you then miss the first half of the following game. But in this case, if this is indeed targeting according to the officials. Now the player would only miss the remainder of this game. And the length of the deliberation here amongst the officials just tells you how hard this call is to make. Isaiah Gandy, number five for Wyoming, awaiting his fate. Now that first angle, I thought it was above the neck, above the shoulders, and it looked like After he let in the helmet. And there then is from an the back angle, it looked like it was with the, the shoulder. Personal foul targeting number five of Wyoming. Those fouls will offset the illegal formation on the kicking team. The personal foul on Wyoming will offset, will replay fourth and six at the 29 yard line. Number five of Wyoming is disqualified from the game. So Candy ejected for targeting. And again, that review came from upstairs. The replay booth is allowed to call for a review to see if there was targeting, if there was no call made on the field. Craig Ball here, not happy in sharing that with the officials. Very difficult call to make, one I don't envy the officials make. A player blocked from the backside is a defenseless player. And Gandy, according to the officials, made forcible contact above the shoulders. He has been disqualified after a lengthy deliberation. New Mexico State to punt again. Fourth and six. Conway makes the catch inside the 30. Races toward the edge. A couple of cutbacks for the former Wyoming basketball player. And a return of eight after a 55-yard punt. Well, if anything, that little delay gave this New Mexico State defense a breather. Ironically, it did. And if you're, if you're a defender, you'll take it. Now, what can they do with it? 
Uh, I, I think when you start to look at where they haven't been great, you look at Nico Evans, nine rush, 74 yards. He's averaging eight yards a clip. They've got to get better there, and they've got to figure out a way to prevent Vander Wall from getting in the rhythm that he's been in. He's 9 of 11, 100 yards already on the day, and he's ripped this defense apart. Already career highs for Nico Evans in rushing and attempts. He gets the call on first down, only a yard there. Evans last year, 11 carries, 19 yards, used primarily on third downs. Very good blocker as a running back, good pass protection. Anish, I've really liked Nico Evans' vision. Most of his... Craig Ball built Wyoming on power football, and right now they're running the ball better than six and a half yards per carry. Uh, these running backs are finishing with their pads low. This offensive line, despite starting three redshirt freshmen, getting the push that is necessary for plays like this from Nico Smith. And these running backs, like I said, they're getting their pads out in front, and they are running through people. Nico Evans, 10 carries, 75 yards to go along with the touchdown. Second and nine from the 36. Vanderwall in trouble. Gets away, throws it at the feet of Harshman, who was in the area code and it hit the receiver, and that may have saved a, well, almost a grounding penalty. That's a great play. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it looked ugly. But I think when you go back, and if you're a coaching staff, you, you look at that and you say, it's a pretty athletic play to, to be able to throw it in the direction of a passing target. Once again, trying to go with the misdirection. Great job there by the defense. Hanks, not fooled by the play action fake. You'd like to see him there secure the quarterback. He needs those sacks. Now, third long situation. Vanderwall has been good in this situation. Can he do it again? Aggie's showing pressure. Here's the blitz. Quick screen. Conway. Got a nice push from the backside. A gain of a dozen and a first down. There's the redshirt freshman center, Patrick Arnold, giving a little extra motivation. <laughs> hey, I like that guy. You know, not only is he clearing the way in that A gap, now you see him running downfield. Great block on the outside edge. Even better play call there from the offensive coordinator, Brent Vegan. Just good sense here. You know, you, you, you realize that they may be bringing the pressure. This New Mexico State defense is known for that. Well, how do you beat that? You don't give them time to get to your quarterback. Get the ball out of his hand exactly what they did and let Conway do work. Here's Evans up the middle into Aggie territory and plunges forward to the 44-yard line of New Mexico State. Nico Evans. Already above the 80-yard threshold here in this first half. Uh, Roddy, you, you talk about this guy's patience. Early on, you've seen him really pick his spots. Well, I, I love what they're doing with the outside zone. As a running back, that was my favorite play. The offensive line takes a zone step one way and then gets up fields and blocks. That was just a cutback off of it. He has done a great job of letting those things develop and then exploding through the holes. And you mentioned the finishing. This is a guy that's like 190, maybe 200 pounds. He is absolutely finishing at the end of these runs, too. Evans this time ambushed by Roy Lopez and company for a loss of two. Third and five now for Wyoming. And let's see if Frank Spaziani goes back to the pressure package. He likes to dial it up, but Lopez, my friend, is playing outstanding defense. And he's really just a plug in the middle there, and it allows Spaziani to be able to get into his blitz packages because he can still hold the fort down in the middle. And now, this crowd getting on their feet. They know what type of defense they have here. And this is one of the best defenses New Mexico State has ever had. They've got to do it in these types of moments to prove they've made strides and deserve another bowl game. Aggies excelled on third down last year. Vanderwall, his pass off target intended for fourth, fourth down. And New Mexico State, again, they have not done anything offensively. Still in this game. I'm not sure if Fort got to the right distance. I mean, he was about three or four yards short of the first down marker. Now, if he gets to that spot, because quarterbacks are throwing to a spot in those types of situations, and Vanderwall, who hasn't been off like that all game long, he might have been um, off because Ford didn't get to the proper distance. Mm -hmm. 
O.J. Clark, fair catch signal, and he makes it at the 12-yard line. Next Saturday, college football back in earnest, week one on ABC at 3.30 Eastern, number six Washington, number nine Auburn. That game in Atlanta, and then from Orlando, Louisville against the defending champion, Alabama. Yeah, I, I think Washington's for real. I know that's one of the things that Roddy is watching for. I love their quarterback, Jake, and their running back, Miles. I think those two guys provide you a tandem where you can score points out there in the Pac-12. Romero on first down. And that is caught by Clark. No, it's incomplete. That would have been New Mexico State's first first down. They still don't have a first down. And we've got five minutes and change to go in this first half. Five of New Mexico State's 12 offensive plays have gone for negative yards. Romero throws, and that's dangerous. This is a Wyoming defense that led the nation in takeaways last year. They forced eight turnovers in their bowl game. Third down. OJ Clark here, I thought it was poor timing on his jump, which forced him to kind of be in an awkward motion to catch that ball there. But give credit there to the defender for jarring that ball loose. Uh, the, the linebacker, Chavez Jr. Powell, Powell did a great job finishing the play. Here's the blitz, floated downfield, incomplete, fourth down. It hit Cash Malawia in the back. And New Mexico State three and out yet again. Still no first downs. They had the right matchup. The defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, Scotty Hazelton, said, we want our safety wind guard on the running backs because of the speed from Huntley and Caldwell that time matched up on Malu Uwe. And they had the favorable matchup, but it was just a poorly thrown pass. Malu will miss next week's game against Washington State, suspended one game, and that's the game he'll miss after an off-season DUI charge. Flag down on the punt. Well, start on the offense. All 11 players were not set prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Sixth penalty on New Mexico State in this first half. Talking to Doug Martin yesterday, there's optimism despite not having conference affiliation, being out of the Sun Belt. But they've got a manageable schedule after the first few weeks. They've got a chance to be bowl eligible again. But this is a big game for optics. National TV audience, yep. you're auditioning potentially to the Mountain West, the team you're playing from the Mountain West. Fair catch. Made by Conway, just shy of midfield, and Wyoming back to work offensively. They've had the ball for more than 18 minutes in this first half. Quarterback battles this season. You got one at Clemson and Florida State and Alabama. Both of you guys think Tua and both of you think Kelly Bryant at Clemson over Trevor Lawrence and Tua over Jalen Hurts. Though Jalen has more experience what he was, to, what Tua was able to do in the national title game last season was just unheard of. Jalen was struggling. He came in and saved the day. And Kelly Bryant, uh, I don't even think that's a question mark the way this kid has played the last two seasons. Strong run on first down. I validated the three. Roddy, do you think at the end of the day, given how Alabama and Clemson are built in 2018, that it matters who plays quarterback? Absolutely. I mean, when you look at Clemson especially, this defense has a chance to be all-time great. I mean, looking at that defensive line alone, four guys that could potentially go in the first round, I don't think we've ever seen that before. So this is going to be a team that's built off of running the football, and the quarterback runs a big part of that, and taking care of the football and getting the ball to that defense. Valaday again stopped behind the line by Hat Hanks. It'll bring up third down. Terrell Hanks came to New Mexico State from Miami, Florida. He told us when he was recruited by the Aggies, he had no idea where New Mexico was, had no <laughs> idea what Las Cruces was. <laughs> Indeed, he won't be the only one. And now you, you see this crowd once again, third down. 
one of the best third down defense a season ago, the New Mexico State Aggies. What do they have here dialed up for the red shirt freshman quarterback, Vanderwall? Vanderwall, two out of six after starting eight for eight. Has time. Downfield. Ball is tipped in the air. Incomplete. Intended for Fort's Shaman Lomax, who had four picks last year, was in the area, and Fort is down, and he's holding that left knee. Well, he was. Now grabbing it again. Austin Fort limping off the field after taking a spill on that third down incompletion. Take another look. Yeah, this knee just gets caught up underneath right there, that left knee, and then the hit from behind from the defender. It was an excellent throw there from Vanderwall, putting it right on the money, low and away, giving Fort the only opportunity to catch that pass and see that left leg get drug and caught up underneath him. Sorry, Matt. Zaleski to punt. O.J. Clark waits for it. 13. Clark accelerates to the 20, and New Mexico State with another turn on offense with 3.50 to go in this first half. The Aggies still without a first down. They've run 14 plays for a grand total of zero yards. And that's, that's just jaw-dropping numbers if you're a Wyoming defense. And and they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do right now. They are winning in the trenches. They're running up front. The Aggies can't run the football. And when it is passing opportunities, this defense is flying around the way they did a season ago. Now they're more experienced with some NFL talent littered all over the field. But this defense is proving why, in my opinion, I believe it is the best group of five defense in the country. Romero under pressure. And threw it away with Gaffon breathing down his neck, second down. I mean, Gufan is 6'4", 282 pounds. His ball get off is outstanding. With the snap of the ball, you've got to get up and block him. And then once you do, then you've got to deal with his power, his moves. He was a former soccer player. That's why his footwork at the point of attack is outstanding. And as a defensive lineman, when you can hunker down and, and get the proper foot position, it really allows for you to hold up against the run and then chase down the run back. So that last play, there was a flag down. It was ruled intentional grounding. So loss of down. And the avalanche of penalties continue. Well, what took so long to make the call? For New Mexico State, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's there's no one. Clearly well, grounding. Huntley was in there. Huntley, Huntley appeared to be in that frame. And, and this is what Doug Martin is telling the, the officials right now. You're exactly right. Doug Martin is giving the officials an earful, telling him that Huntley was right in that scrum. And, yeah, he's a little guy amongst the tall trees, yeah. but he I was in the there. area. Wow. But, you know, yeah, New Mexico State has not done itself favors with ten penalties on the day, but then you get one like that where um, certainly it appeared to me as though maybe the officials missed Huntley in the area. Now second and long, pressure again, incomplete third down. You know, Wyoming defensively with Gaffon and Carl Granderson, and when they bring in number 42, Kevin Prosser, a speed rusher, they don't necessarily need to bring extra guys. They don't necessarily need to blitz to get pressure. And how does that affect the quarterback? You saw there Romero with busy feet, and, you know, that clock in your head as a quarterback starts to tick even faster when you have this type of defensive line. And now they're forced in a third long situation. And as you mentioned, you bring in your pass rushers. Here comes one of their top guys, Crosser. It's a four-man twist. Romero gets away. Buying time. And nothing going on as Huntley made the catch, but it's only good for two yards. Fourth down, New Mexico State. On this With off. less than 3.30 to go, still without a first down, 
and with negative 11 yards in this first half. This offense is predicated on opening up space, and the Cowboys have been tackling outstanding in the open field. That time there, Tyler Hall, the linebacker, nickelback, coming up, making a play, and they have suffocated this Aggies offense. And if you're Doug Martin, you're scratching your head looking for answers. Theisler to punt. Conway from midfield. And he's going to be marked down right at the 49 yard line of Wyoming. Sports Center tonight on ESPN after top ranked boxing. Steve Levy and John Bucciagrass have you covered. They'll break down the quarterbacks for the Niners and Colts today Jimmy Garoppolo and Andrew Luck. Richard Sherman and J.J. Watt are back, and Verlander and Kershaw on the mound in Southern California. Astros and Angels, Dodgers host the Pirates. Is Garoppolo the real deal? What's I mean, that? I'm really looking forward to seeing if Garoppolo is the real deal. He I, looks so in that small sample size last year. But I, yeah, as a, as a football fan, I really would like to see the 49ers be relevant again. And if he is, uh, they're right back in the picture. Nico Evans on the cutback. As Roddy alluded to, we continue to see the patience of number 22 who's closing in on 90 yards in this first half. Yikes. And of all the guys that they've had out there, I think Nico Evans is the one that's got the hot hand, the one that's really feeling it. It seems like every cut he makes is the right one. And, and guys, we've talked about the youth of this offensive line. They have really gelled, particularly on those zone plays. They have had a hat on a hat and made it easy on the running backs. Down New Mexico State with the answer on the defensive end. It's Demby and Roy Lopez, 51 for the Aggies, who's been one of the few standouts for Doug Martin's team in this first half. What he does when he's a run stopper, and you'll see it here, he forces things to go outside. Look at him, he's creating a foul. There's no space there for the running back, and a great job from Demby to chase down the play on the back end. I don't know how this Aggies defense is still holding up after the way they've been on the field for over 20 minutes, and now you're forced into another third down situation. They're tired, hands on their hips, but if they can make a play here, they continue to help this offense stay in the ball game. And a timeout called by Vanderwall amidst the Cowbells. Third and final timeout by Wyoming. So what does Brent Vegan, the offensive coordinator for Wyoming, draw up here? Third and four, near midfield. And New Mexico State, the last couple of times, has had a couple of stops. Uh, the stat sheet says otherwise, but it's still only a two-score game. Well, from this distance, when you look at it, in third and four situations may not be the, the, the most opportune time to bring the blitz. So. If you're a member of the secondary, if you're the linebacker, what you're expecting is this ball to get out of his hand very quickly. Uh, short throws, stick routes where the wide receivers and backs are trying to get to the first down marker. But this is a big play. They needed the rest here after being on the field as long as they have. And now they need playmakers to emerge. Here's where last year they had a couple guys that could bail them out. Who is the guy this season for the Aggies? Roddy, given that New Mexico State has done little offensively, and given how much time is left, could this be even four down territory? I absolutely think so. I think it's very possible you'll see two runs here out of Wyoming and try and let this offensive line continue to lean on this New Mexico State team. Now, if you don't get anything on the first play, then I definitely expect Wyoming to punt and let your defense play because they have been suffocating this entire game. Mayfield motions. Play action. Vanderwall on the run. Dumps it forward and it's dropped by Tyree Mayfield fourth down. And let's see if the punt team comes on. Yeah, there's great creativity and you don't go for it on fourth down here. The punting unit's getting ready. But, but Vanderwall, what you need to be doing there is he did a great job of eluding the pressure. 
but this flick needs to be sooner. Watch here. As soon as you get past the defender, flick the football. He took too long. He didn't give um, the pass catcher space to even make a play there had he even caught it. But the play was open in the flat, and that is what New Mexico State has been giving them all game long. The short route, and he had success there early on going there. He needs to go back to it. So Lasky's punt. O.J. Clark lets it bounce. It goes into the end zone. So the Aggies of New Mexico State will take it out at the 20-yard line. 67 seconds to go in this first half. New Mexico State, negative 11 total yards, zero first downs. They've been hampered by penalties. They just have not been able to move the ball against the defense, which, again, we knew going in was going to be one of the best, maybe the best in the group of five. The only good thing I can say about this offense right now is they're turnover free. <laughs> I mean, if you're Doug Martin, you're just thinking, well, we haven't given them the football, but we haven't given ourselves any chances either to score points. And if you're Romero, now's the time to really win your teammates over. Everybody's looking at you. You're new to the locker room, and people want to know, and, and this is a cool kid, you know? He's got SD's uh, tattooed on his calf. Can he do it now? First down, that is caught at the 26-yard line. Shea Holbrook, junior college transfer. Positive yardage. Aggies have two timeouts. And you've got to take a shot here at some point and try to stretch out this defense. Clock continues to run, second and three. Four-man rush. That's going to be just shy of the marker. will bring up third and short. O.J. Clark with the reception. Down to 30 seconds. Clock still running. Aggies refuse to take a timeout. Need a yard to pick up their first first down. On the ground. And Huntley gets that first first down to the applause of this Las Cruces crowd. And that will momentarily stop the clock. Do you try anything here? Just go into the locker room, Ahmad. Now oh, it looks like they'll call a timeout. Yeah, I, I, would, I mean, I want to see them take a deep shot. You know, challenge this defense, and especially, particularly at this point in the ball game. Um, a second ago, they 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 had corner routes, that, you know, outbreaking routes to the sideline are normally what you dial up here as an offensive coordinator. But they do have timeouts left, and you know, their field goal range. They need to get down around to the 30 in order to have a shot to at least kick a field goal, um, according to Doug Martin. The worry is, and you alluded to it, they've been turnover free. Wyoming last year, especially in the secondary, yeah. the two hops. starting safeties had nine interceptions. Yeah. And uh, Roddy, the danger is, you know, you take a shot downfield, and in a worst-case scenario, this 15-0 deficit turns into something worse. But you got to try. I mean, you, you have to try and get something going to the locker room to feel good about. We hit a flag. Wide receiver. Drew Dane. Full start. Offense number nine. Five yard penalty. No first down. Yeah, Drew Dan there, the wide receiver, just trying to get an early jump. And wow, I mean, if you Doug, Doug Martin right now, you, this is your message going in. You know, you just you look at your guys and say, guys, we've got to calm down. Double digit penalties in the first half of the game. They'll keep it on the ground, and the Wyoming defense is all over it. More flags fly. Huntley again on the carry, who's not had much running room. Holding offense number 74, 10 yard penalty, still first down. Jamin Smith, he tackled the defender there while trying to block him. See it here in the middle of your screen. It's latched on, and in that last part, he just finished it off like a defender, drug him down to the ground. Huntley to the edge, spun down with two seconds, and time expires in half number one. Prior to that last drive, New Mexico State had negative total yards in that first half. The Aggies only had one first down in the first 30 minutes. Down to Roddy Jones, who's with Craig Bowl. 
Coach, your defense was suffocating. Only the one first down in the first half. What's made them so effective? Well, first of all, we're running the football offensively, but I think we're to establish the line of scrimmage. That front four is doing a great job, and, you know, we've been tackling really well. Offensively, you talked about the importance of running the football. What do you need to do to get the ball in the end zone consistently? Well, we've got to not shoot ourselves in the food. I, I think we've got to get our uh, matchups a little bit better in the running game. We're running hard. Uh, Tyler's got to put the ball where he needs to a couple more times. And I think we're a little, we're in a good shape, but we got to keep on uh, pressing. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. And he sounds like Coach feels pretty good. Good that this New Mexico State offense only has eight yards. And that's the fewest Wyoming has allowed in a half in the last 15 seasons. New Mexico State will take it out at the 25-yard line. Roddy Jones down on the field. Roddy, you had a chance to catch up with Coach Martin. I did, and he was extremely calm, and he told me, I've got Wyoming right where I want them. The defense is overconfident, and the offense is tired from playing the first the whole first half, so we've got them right where we want them. He was joking, of course, but he did say the penalties really threw them off sync. That and breaking in a new quarterback really got them out of schedule on offense, but he's really pleased with the way the defense is playing because they've been on the field essentially the whole first half, and he said they've only allowed 15 points. One touchdown, and it's 15-7. Matt Romero's first pass of the third quarter is caught by Jonathan Boone. A gain of three yards, setting up second and seven. Boone, a senior from Orlando, a lot of potential. But he's been inconsistent throughout his career. And remember, New Mexico State lost Jaleel Scott. The fourth round pick to the Ravens, their star wideout last year. Romero downfield, has an open receiver. And that's caught. Anthony Muse, who had 40 catches a year ago, the junior captain. That's the, the biggest play of the day for the Aggies, and now they're coming back up to the football. Here's where they like to get the defense on their heels. Empty look. Romero under pressure and sacked. And we get a late flag at the 35. Trey Woods with the sack. Actually make that Nick Smith. No, it is Trey Woods. Woods was a running back, moved to defensive end in fall camp. He's explosive off that edge. Holding offense number 76. That penalty is declined. Brings up second down. Now, we weren't sure if we were going to see Trey Woods, who started nine games at running back last year, and was moved to D-end with the emergence of a couple of freshmen in Valaday and Bigelow. Yeah, watching here just fight off the block there from 55, Sebastian Anderson, and then the burst, outstanding. Romero tripped up by Prosser as he gets to the 42. Third down now. The Aggies need to get to the 43-yard line of Wyoming. Here's a zero look. There's no middle of the field safety, which means they're either bringing the blitz. Now they drop the safeties back. Romero devoured. Garrett Crawl, the former walk-on, a couple of sacks by this Wyoming defense to dull any positive momentum from New Mexico State. Well, you're, you're, you're worried about Gaffon and Granderson, obviously, and now on a stun on the outside. Granders, um, pardon me, Gaffon gets the double, which just opened it up for Garrett Crawl, and that's one way to beat it. When you're getting doubled on the outside edge and they're putting all the pressure there, run some game and some stunts in the middle, and that time it opened up. Nice play call there from Scotty Hazleton, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys. Peyton Theisler, the junior from Phoenix to punt. Unofficially held as the best Fortnite player on the team. Conway has the 20. Zooms across to the 27. New Mexico State tonight in the first half. Nine penalties, negative rushing yards, Look, and that's, only eight total yards. That's atrocious. That, that's just bad. That's bad, bad, bad football. And Doug Martin, that man right there, you know, that's not something that these fans came out to watch. It's hard to get involved. It's hard to carry over momentum from perhaps the best season in New Mexico State history. And you come back and, you know, you're just not executing. And nor is your head in the game at that point. Can they come back out today and calm their nerves and make something happen? Two tight ends into the game, first and ten. 
Evans gets the call. And snakes his way to the 30 yard line. Tackled by Roy Lopez, who's had a nice game for New Mexico State. We mentioned last year, New Mexico State getting to a bowl game for the first time since 1960. The 57 year postseason drought, the longest active streak in the FBS prior to that Arizona Bowl win against Utah State. And it also snapped a streak of 14 straight losing seasons. Play action. Harshman tiptoes the sideline, but he stepped out. It sets up third down. And the Aggies secondary, they've done a good job on the play action today of covering downfield. What they're giving them right now is the short crossing route to the delayed tight end route on the side where they're over there um, rolling out to. And it's been open tonight all day for Vanderwall. That time there, he threw it on time. They just weren't able to continue. But this is definitely a doable third down as uh, they come out again with two tight ends on the football field and two wide receivers lined up to the right. Vanderwall downfield. Incomplete intended for James Price. And that is a favorable matchup. Terrell Hanks, the leader for this Aggies defense, locked up with James Price, the wide receiver from the Cowboys. He had more than a step on him. Vanderwall misses with the throw there, and if he throws that on stride, he walks into the end zone. Once again, another missed opportunity. We saw one in the first half, and now we see another one that the Cowboys missed to have an explosive play downfield. Zaleski the punt. Clark. Knocked down at the 37-yard line. That's where New Mexico State will begin. We do have a flag down, though, back at the 24-yard line. Running into the kicker on the defense, five-yard penalty results in the first down. You have got to be kidding me. And if I'm on this defense right now, I am losing my mind. Yeah. I, I am looking at the offense, I'm looking at the specialists, I'm looking at everybody, and I'm holding them accountable. Completely uncalled for. You had no chance of blocking the punt there and this is what has happened all night long to the Aggies. Yeah, you, you finally get a stop. This defense who's been playing valiantly, and then you come back and Austin Perkins runs into the kicker for a first down and puts the Cowboys offense back out on the field. And Wyoming has had the ball for the vast majority of this game. They don't run tempo, they take their time. Evans across the 40 for a gain of three. Well, that's what happens when you're fatigued. You can't hold on to people. When you've been out on the field for almost the entire game, now the defense, they're tired. They make a win. And I love Lopez's effort and his energy right now. But at some point, that juice runs out. You can't do that all game long, and you can't do it play after play after play after play when this is a deep the offense that's already trying to grind you down. Evans again, cuts it back, has some room. Spins into Aggie territory for a first down. And Nico Evans in his first career start, north of 100 yards rushing. Injured Aggie back down at the 38-yard line of Wyoming. We'll step aside. Wyoming on the move.
Indian fans. Show your Aggie pride support our student athletes by joining the Aggie Athletic Club today. Members are eligible for priority seating and parking for Aggie football and men's basketball games. But to join, call 646-5151 or visit the Aggie Athletic Club office in the Fulton Center. Fans turn your attention to north end of the field for the Planet Fitness Judgment Free Relay Race. Our four person teams will have a contested crowd walk for 10 yards, a dizzy bad run for 10 yards, and the final group will be a wheel barrel for 10 yards to the finish. Our first team, Haley and Josh. Second team, Abby and Abu Dulai. Gabe, Antonio, and Deandre, and Natasha. All right, are you ready? On your marks, get set. Go! Defensive end of Josebio Reese, the injured New Mexico State player, helped off the field of being attended to. And at the end, the Aggies are missing Cedric Wilcotts, who was their top sack artist from a season ago, suspended for the first two games because of academics. So they're thin there anyway, and now Reese is hurt. You see him here. He's trying to take on that block. It's good extension, but then he gets rolled up on. And that is, some, that is one of the worst injuries for a defensive lineman. You don't see it coming. And that is a major loss for the Aggies defense. Terrell Hanks with the tackle after the handoff. Goes to Evans for three more. came into this season so much chatter about how do you replace Josh Allen the quarterback from a season ago the seventh overall pick drafted by the Bills his production is going to be replaceable but coaches told us the intangibles he helped usher in a belief in this program that they could compete at the highest levels as we get a penalty marker Lloyd upset at himself. That would be the 11th penalty on the Aggies. Offside, defense number 94, five-yard penalty, second down. Yeah, and at this point, I'm just waiting for Doug Martin's headset to come flying off the sideline. This is one of those moments as a coach where, you know, it can't go any worse in terms of the discipline of your team. These types of penalties speak directly to that. And though it is the first game, and this is a program that's still trying to find its way, this has to be disappointing for Doug Martin. They'll have to clean it up fast. The next game is Thursday at Minnesota. Up the middle again, Evans close to the first down marker, third and short. Great bowl teams, we've seen it. At Wyoming, we saw it at North Dakota State. They start wearing you down. They'll run the same play over and over. Now going quickly, and Vanderwall sneaks ahead. This will be close. It appears though he got it. How about Wyoming trying to get on the ball quickly to, to get that quarterback sneak off? It caught the New Mexico State. Aggies off guard. When you're trying to run right up the middle with Roy Lopez there, it's tough. And they're Just short. Just short, fourth down. And 
let's see what Wyoming will do. Oh, they're presenting out the punt unit, and here right now, I tell you, I would try to wear down this defense. They've been on the field so long. If there is a time to run on a fourth down, the time is now. But this still doesn't mean that they can't go for a fake here. This is still the perfect opportunity for a fake punt. Instead, they will play the field position game. Zaleski's punt is caught inside the 10-yard line, and that's a mistake. Definitely. Poor decision there. And it just keeps on unraveling as O.J. Clark catches a ball that he should have either let go out of bounds or caught it with a fair catch. Last year, New Mexico State played in a bowl game for the first time since 1960. And it took overtime to get past Utah State. Late in regulation, Tyler Rogers to Jaleel Scott for a touchdown in OT, Utah State. Missing a field goal, the Aggies of Utah State missed four field goals. And then Larry Rose the third, second leading rusher in school history, the game winner. New Mexico State head coach Doug Martin called it the most rewarding experience he's had in coaching. It has been a long rebuild here. 14 straight losing seasons for the New Mexico State Aggies. Doug Martin didn't have a winning season until last year. And winning the ball game for the first time since 1960. Chubby Checker's twist was all the rage. Hitchcock <laughs> psycho ruled Hollywood. And as Billy Joel tells us, the Belgians were in the Congo. Jason Huntley with a gain of four. Logan Wilson, leading tackler for Wyoming from last year, in on the stop. Roddy, how does New Mexico State ignite this offense? Well, they've got to take some shots down the field. Wyoming has done so much press man that they're going to have to win some of those one-on-one -on -one battles. And also finding Huntley. He looks like he's single one-on-one -on -one in the slot with Wingard, so we'll see if he goes for him. There's a shot downfield. Incomplete. Over the head of Drew Dan. It almost seems about Wyoming's daring Matt Romero to beat them over the top. Yeah, because they've got a defensive line that knows that those routes take a long time to develop, right? And so when you've got a D-line like the Cowboys have, they're going to get to you quick, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And that's what's happened. He did have time there, and the quickest throw there, was that was just a fade route. And he got over the top and just couldn't hit him on target. One high safety look on third down. Romero on the run. Throws on the run. And making the catch for a first down, New Mexico State. Ruled incomplete, no catch by Tavis Abraham. Now they just can't catch a break tonight. And, and that's the second time tonight where, we, where it looked, or at least appeared to be a catch. That is a reviewable play. No, and that is a good no call. Catch. Incomplete. Great call by the officials there. And, and I think you also saw something that maybe if you're Doug Martin, you could try to add more of. Get Romero on the move, especially with this defensive line chasing him down the way that they are. Move the pocket, move the launch point, do any, you know, try something here. And I don't even think that was designed. It was a poor snap, and then he was forced to move out of the pocket. But I like the idea of moving Romero to try to buy him some time to get him away from that dominant defensive line. Eighth punt of the game by Theisler. A lot of hang time, fair catch made by Conway. And Wyoming now will play the field position game. Remember, on Wyoming's last offensive sequence, well, they punted from New Mexico State territory. Now they've got the ball at the 43. Next Saturday, 3.30 on ABC, Washington and Auburn, a top 10 matchup. And Alabama opens its title defense against Louisville. What chance do you give Louisville in that game? None. Zero. <laughs> Can you do a minus here? Because I'd do that if I could. <laughs> Out of the eye formation on first down. Nico Evans up the middle. Bounces off the defender. Open sesame. Evans into the clear. Touchdown, Wyoming.
I want you to watch the pad level of Nico Evans. It's something that Roddy and I have talked about today at 5'9", 2'11". The coaching staff was very honest and frank with us yesterday. He wasn't running like this a season ago, and almost they'd almost written him off. But this spring, this young man dedicated himself to the weight room, to getting stronger with his lower body, and now you're seeing runs like this. For the second time tonight, he's finished with distance. If he can keep that part of his game, this Wyoming offense will become more dangerous because they struggled a season ago getting those types of explosive plays. A 56-yard touchdown run. You talk about sudden change, New Mexico State. An incomplete pass that would have extended the drive on the previous drive, running into the kicker to extend Wyoming's drive, and the Cowboys capitalize. Nico Evans having himself a career night here in Las Cruces. 22-0 Wyoming with the Oregon Mountains in the distance. Nico Evans has been the music man for Wyoming. Two rushing touchdowns, 22 zip Cowboys. Nothing. Wyoming on top of New Mexico State. Nico Evans, two touchdown runs, 163 yards on just 20 carries. Fifth-year senior from Los Angeles, getting the start today. An afterthought before spring ball. Huntley will let this one bounce into the end zone for a touchback, and New Mexico State will take it out. A lot of the fans have filed for the exits, and that's not a good look, to be honest. It, the Aggies are a team right now. They don't have a conference. Optics are important. Their coaching staff told us every Saturday is an audition. Yeah, things aren't going so well. The offense hasn't played well. And, and listen, there's a lot of history of, of poor performance here over the years. But there was a lot of anticipation building up for this game, not just on campus, but from the Las Cruces community. And this is disappointing to see if you are a New Mexico State player and you're a fan of the Aggies. 
Huntley with a couple of nice moves, and he gets all the way to the 37-yard line, a gain of 13. There hasn't been enough of that. And Doug Martin wanted an exciting brand of football. That's why he brought this air raid offense, and you haven't seen it. Uh, with that goose egg on the board and the lack of production from this offense, the defense hasn't played bad, but this offense hasn't lived up to the hype at all. Romero, sideline, pass batted down. Ahmad, at the top of the broadcast, you said the challenge for New Mexico State, now that they're kicked out of the Sun Belt, would be to sustain the success, yeah. build off of last year. And the jury's still out. Was last year an outlier, or was it truly something to build upon? Well, I, they've got the talent now in place, in my opinion. Now it's just about having that leadership and playmakers and game changers. They're still searching for those, obviously. Over on the far side, Jake Clark for a game of four. His um, third catch. Ahmad, I completely agree with you about the leadership aspect. When you lose a quarterback that had a 4,000-yard season, when you lose Larry Rose, who Coach Martin told us was the cornerstone of this program, was the heartbeat of this program, that leaves a gaping hole. It's going to take some time to figure out who that next guy is. Against a four-man twist. That is incomplete through the hands of Clark. Fourth down and five now. New Mexico State will call on the punt team for the ninth time tonight. Amazing. And, and then Romero there, there wasn't even pressure. And, and you could tell that this D-line has worn him out. And you know, he just threw the ball. He had time in the pocket there to get some separation on the back end. And it just wasn't there. Austin Conway to return the Theisler punt. It's a bounce. Takes an Aggie bounce inside the 15 and out of bounds at the 13. One week from tomorrow, a special Sunday night kickoff matchup at Jerry World. It'll be top, or I should say number eight, Miami. Mark Richt in his second season with the Canes, taking on 25th ranked LSU. Big season for Ed Ogeron down on the bayou. Mark Richt. Had a great start to 2017. Miami tumbled down the stretch. Can the Canes win the Coastal again and perhaps get back to the ACC championship? I think it comes down to quarterback play and defense. And at times last year, that was you, you saw the Miami of old. You, you got good quarterback play, and this defense was sacking quarterbacks, providing pressure, locking people down on the edges. And that's Miami football. If they can get back to that, uh, the sky is the limit for this team. That's Avante Cox, little trickeration there, game of seven. We've seen them run that motion a couple of times, and honestly, if Cox hadn't tripped over the feet of his own man, he might have been off to the races, guys. He's got ton of, a ton of speed, and that'll help keep the defense honest. They've been playing that zone so hard. Because Wyoming's had so much success, that that's going to be open on the outside. Great point, Roddy. Javon Bigelow, the true freshman in the backfield. Bigelow gets the call. He does not get very far. He has not had much running room tonight. Third down. Now what you can do this year with new rules, a player can play in four games, and you can still redshirt him at the end of the season. And that co allows coaches to sometimes selectively deploy their true freshmen. I think it's a great rule for uh, the coaches, particularly for the student athletes. And, you know, and you, you, we're talking about, it, you, you know, this the Aggies team has suffered already two injuries or an injury and a suspension at their defensive end position. This is the perfect time to try a freshman if you got one that's worthy. Vanderwall on play action as Mayfield. First down and more. Tyree Mayfield lowers the boom near the 40-yard line. Well, we saw Austin Fort, the starting tight end, go down with an injury in the first half. And, uh, Roddy, you said you saw him in street clothes on the sideline? You're exactly right. The, the word on the sideline is that he is out for the game. He's come out in street clothes, a little bit of a limp on that left leg. No word on how serious it is, but we will not see Fent, uh, we will not see Ford back out today. Mayfield with three catches. His primary purpose is to be the blocking tight end. Bigelow again, up the middle, using the power. 
into Aggie territory. Flag is down. A couple flags down. Illegal block below the waist on the offense, number 85, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, replay first down. You cannot block a player Thirty-five below the waist more than five yards downfield. Yeah, I like this rule, and this is actually a rule here to protect the defenders. And You know, a year ago, that would have been a perfect block, and, 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 I, and I, I think it's the right thing to do. Um, particularly if you're going to also protect the offensive players as you do with the targeting call and protect the knees of the players downfield. I, I, I like this new rule that's been implemented. On a first and ten, Bigelow. Powers through the line, but not for much. Second down. Frank Spaziani, defensive coordinator for New Mexico State, former head coach at Boston College. He came aboard to this staff a few years ago. Doug Martin was an old Spaziani assistant at BC, and Coach Spaz repaid the favor, joining Doug Martin's staff. He's helped to turn around this defense, which was fifth nationally in sacks last year. Vanderwall over the middle, nearly intercepted as it went off the hands of Harshman. Shimon Lomax, who had four picks last year, almost had his first of 2018. That tip, tip ball drill. And uh, every team works on this. And you get an opportunity here. You rush Vanderwall out of the pocket. And now I think this is a great opportunity. You talked about Frank. And I enjoyed my conversation with him Thursday out at practice. He talked about how much he's changed, had to change to this style of football and how much it's changed. One thing that hasn't changed about him, an aggressive style and a blitz package. And off to Evans. Taken down by the ankles. Another flag at the end of the play. Holding, offense number 62. That penalty is declined, brings up fourth down. So Craig Bowles' team to bump it away. Fourth down. Now the worry if you're New Mexico State is that with Wyoming's ability to have these long clock-eating possessions, you're down three scores. How many more chances do you get in this ball? Great question. Clark buffed the punt. And able to recover. Our field analyst, Roddy Jones, you played at Georgia Tech. You guys were notorious under Paul Johnson for shortening games as we take another look. And Clark able to recover. Now, Roddy, what did that do sometimes to the other team's offense when they knew there was such an urgency? Uh, Anish, we, we called them death marches. The, the you know, 9, 10, 11 play drives. You can just feel the, the energy come out of the stadium as it looks like we've got a new quarterback here for New Mexico State. It is. It's Nick Genty who backed up Tyler Rogers the last few years. Genty coming out, throwing. First pass nearly intercepted. Tyler Hall who had two picks last year, almost had that one in New Mexico State, has almost given it back on back-to-back -back possessions. Yeah, Genty, who the coaching staff, Doug Martin, said that he just hadn't done enough to separate himself. He had a body of work, but it, quite frankly, it wasn't just great. And then Tyler Hall, who has moved in from the cornerback position, has provided them a stable player at the nickelback position. He plays kind of like a linebacker in the line of scrimmage. I'm shocked that he actually dropped that pass. He's got great ball skills, and that's one he'll want back. Genty, quick screen, Anthony Muse for a short gain, third and long. 
Lamont, I think you of all people can appreciate the job that these corners have done today on these New Mexico State receivers. They've been playing up in press for most of the day, which takes away all the hard throws. But anytime they've been challenged down the field, they have really stood up to the task. And you're absolutely right. And, and this coaching staff, they are in love with number 21, C.J. Colden. And Hazleton said that this guy can be special down the road. A whistle. That's on there. All start offense number 76. Five yard penalty remains third down. It's the left tackle, Sage Dox Tatter. Six foot seven, 330 pound junior from Canada who, believe it or not, is a vegetarian. And not to be confused with the vegan, Brent vegan, the. Oh, that's, a, that's a week zero. Joke. <laughs> I laugh at it. <laughs> Incomplete, great coverage by Antonio Hull, no flag. Holbrook was the intended target, fourth down. Right on cue as Roddy was talking about these corners. Antonio Hull, the young man from Diamond Bar, California with excellent coverage downfield. Timing to turn his head around was perfect. And that was a good ball there from Nick Genty, who came out with the first pass. It should have gone the other way that time on target on the fade route. So New Mexico State to punt. One thing the Aggies have not done today is turn it over. The 12 penalties have hurt. Conway looking for the edge. Nowhere to go and drops shy of the 30, 49 yard punt. Now for Wyoming, the next step in the progression of this program is to compete for a Mountain West Conference Championship. Two years ago, they played in the conference title game. Boise State is one of the teams to beat, not just in the Mountain West, but in the group of five. And the top group of five team in the college football playoff rankings will play in a New Year's Six Bowl game. Wyoming has maybe the best defense in the group of five. The question, Ahmad, is going to be, can they get better on offense? Can they improve enough on offense to be that team at the end of the year that can beat Boise? I think you're right. And then the way that I've seen Nico Evans perform tonight, maybe this is your playmaker in the backfield. And if they can establish that rushing attack, here he goes again. Great pad level. Breaking tackles and bullying across the 40. Finally pushed out by the former Minnesota Gopher, Ray Buford. Yeah, if you can get more of that, uh, watch out Boise State and Utah State. Uh, the Cowboys are coming because this offensive line has been sharp tonight. Um, I thought Vanderwall has done enough to keep them in the ball game. He's been sharp 12 of 20. Start off the game extremely hot. He's made good decisions. And so you start to look at the Cowboys, and, and in my humble opinion, after seeing what I've seen so far, and I'd have to watch Boise State and Utah State, but I think the Cowboys right now have an edge because they're under the radar. Evans spins away and then forced out. He almost got out of that one as that <laughs> left knee barely goes down. It's good defense there from the Aggies. And what can you say about this Aggies defense tonight? Uh, they, they've been out here all game long. And, and this is not an easy task, taking on a tough-minded offense that's a power-rushing attack. They are trying to beat you down. And the Aggies have tried to answer that with their own aggressive play. And defensively, Doug Martin said it at half to Roddy Jones. I think they've played as well as they can considering it. Yeah, this one is not on the defense. Blitz off the edge. Evans runs the opposite side, and he's got a first down for Wyoming. He's got a chance for a 200-yard evening in his first game of the season. Yeah, it's almost eight yards a pop, too. Man, if you can get that kind of production, and, and head coach Greg Bowl told us, he said, we look for four yards a carry. And if you've kind of backed this dominant right now, already two touchdowns, he's shown that he can score from distance. I really like the way Nico Evans has taken control of the running back position. And you can see why now they announced him as being the starter. 190 yards for Evans. Bigelow now dots the eye. Bigelow right up the gut. This defense starting to get a little gassed. A gain of nine as we near the end of the third quarter. 
Wyoming has been stifling defensively, and the offense has done enough thanks to Nico Evans, who's got two rushing touchdowns. Shroff, Roddy Jones, Ahmad Brooks. Fourth quarter here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. The sea of Valley. The city of the crosses. On, and New Mexico State, the home team, has been crossed up most of the evening. Penalties, some mental errors. The defense has played well for the most part offensively. It's been a complete zero, and Wyoming has a 22-0 lead as we begin the fourth. Second and one for the Cowboys. Javon Bigelow. He's tackled for a loss, setting up a third and two. Terrell Hanks gets him in the backfield, and Hanks is the best pro prospect on this New Mexico State team. He is, yeah. He's, he's a go-getter. He's a thumper. He certainly looks the part, has the frame. The one question mark to his game is he can, he can oftentimes be a little too eager to get into the action. He can cover. Uh, but I think this kid will find himself on a roster. He looks the part, and as long as he can continue to progress in this last year, he'll be good. He told us the only reason he heard of New Mexico State was because of the NCAA football video game, which is no longer in production. Mayfield made the catch, and he picks up enough to move the chains. And this is a, an Aggies program. It's about brand awareness. And growing your brand and building off of last year and for Wyoming they're on that upward trajectory and what's made them successful a great bowl's ability to find hidden gems Carson Wentz was from Bismarck North Dakota nobody was in on him and he actually didn't really play as a starter at North Dakota State until Craig Bowl left Fargo and came to Laramie Josh Allen a guy that nobody really recruited out of high school that Wyoming found out of junior college Bigelow now and then the other two defensive players on that list, Wingard, who's turned into an all-American safety. I love that kid. Was a high school running yeah. back in Colorado. None of the in-state schools offered. And Craig Bowl knew Andrew Wingard's father because they played together at Nebraska. So he comes to Wyoming, and Bowl sees him as a safety. Granderson, who's got an NFL future as a pass rusher, was 185 pounds when he came to college, <laughs> yet they saw a defensive end, and he spilled out into a 6'5", 260-pound menace. Indeed. Unfortunately, when I asked Coach Bull pregame if he can make something out of me, he said, no, man, you're too far gone. <laughs> I'd have to agree with him there, man. Got that dad bot going on down there on the sideline. Wow. You gotta hold him back. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Third down after the Bigelow run. Look at Carl Granderson. That is amazing. When he arrived on campus, and now. <laughs> that's, that's shocking. You know, and the fact that he's flexing over there, is, you know, that's, that, that tells you a lot about his personality. But I, I mean, definitely, uh, you, you watch this kid on film, he's special. He's got, he's got all the skill set to transition to the next level. I believe an ideal um, end for a 3-4 three three, system, and there's plenty of those in the NFL. Third and six. Bigelow powers across the 30 for a first down. And the challenge at Wyoming is that you're not going to get a ton of help from the in-state pool. Wyoming is one of the largest states, but it is the least populated of the 50 states. Craig Bowl has only signed three scholarship players, uh, I should say eight scholarship players from the state since he took over, but what he's done is he's used the walk-on program like Tom Osborne did yep. at Nebraska. Well, it really just infuses some state pride into your program, and he mentioned that. He said, these guys come here, they want to be at Wyoming, and that really, um, I believe, helps the other players understand the community better, and for that matter, the privilege it is to play at a, at a place like Wyoming. Bowl calls a timeout. First and ten, Wyoming on the move again, looking to add to a three-score lead. Roddy's got something for you. Hey. Roddy was in the weight room with New Mexico State where they can actually give you real-time
feedback on your squats and your power cleans and take that a mod, Mr. Dad Bod. Oh, oh, look at that power clean right there now. Hey, all I'm saying is Don Decker, the strength and conditioning coach, and this program, when you look at it, this thing is called the Elite Form. And what it's able to do is track these athletes. It helps them become safer when they're on their the platform for their Olympic lifts. And it's been the transition, Doug Marks even said, the players look different. So uh, that's just one small thing that this program has done to help the student athletes. Bigelow sneaking ahead on first down. And, and it looked like to me that Don Decker there was helping Roddy with that squat. Come you know, on, man. I was throwing my way no, around, no, no. Ahmad. <laughs> no, but you're exactly right. You know, when, when Coach Decker talked to us, he talked about the fact that when he first got here and they installed that system, they wanted 7 out of 10 reps. That was their goal, to have 7 out of 10 reps to be in the green zone or the, or the zone that shows a good lift. Now they're up to 8.5 out of 10 reps that are in that green zone. So you're talking about a 15% increase in the quality of their training. That's why the bodies of these guys are absolutely transformed. Back to the true freshman, Bigelow. Third down. And that technology that New Mexico State uses is employed by about 31 other FBS programs. Yes. So not everybody uses it, but it's next level. It is. It gives you real-time feedback. Yep. You can know right away if you're doing what is a correct rep. And you brought up the point that sometimes in summer workouts when the strength coach isn't working, <laughs> you'll cheat. Well, now you're being videotaped. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> and that's so one of when he turns around, you're like, ah, uh, nine, not yeah. ten. <laughs> and the competition aspect of it, you see that red screen, you're like, oh, no, I need another rep. On <laughs> third down. This is Bigelow again. And the true freshman with his first career touchdown to make it 28 nothing. Yeah, it's it's hard to not feel sympathetic for this defense right now with the amount of time they've logged in over 36 minutes, and you could just see they've been worn down. You know, one of the keys earlier was we were talking about the Mexico State. Offense needed to wear them down, but you just saw a 12 play drive 71 yards take up seven minutes of the clock That is Wyoming football and that is why I believe this team right here is in line Diamonds in the rough and he said that experience coaching at the FCS in the division two ranks that certainly plays At a place like Wyoming 100% he was very humble uh, but the reality of it is he's the lucky charm, you know, because the head coach signs off on all of these recruits, all of the position changes, et cetera. And it's really been his eye and his ability to identify talent. And, you know, with Carson Wentz, uh, we, you know, when we were able to call the championship game where he comes back from injury, hadn't played eight games, Easton Stick there was, was balling out, and you saw Carson Wentz come in the first time. I looked over you at the booth, and I go, this kid's for real. And you had been telling me about it because you had seen him previously. But, I mean, we're talking Carson Wentz could be the face of the league when it's time for Tom Brady to pass on the mantle. The early returns for Josh Allen have been pretty good over in Buffalo. That one is knocked away. C.J. Colden got in there late for Wyoming, the corner, who's impressed in camp. Well, let me tell you something. That's a cover three look, and their base for Wyoming, they like to run cover three. Great reaction time from the cornerback there to be able to get back to that ball and to knock it loose. And he did it with great efficiency and effectiveness. Nick Genty in at quarterback for New Mexico State. Matt Romero started the game. Genty throwing far side. That's complete. O.J. Clark. Four catches for Clark with less than 10 yards altogether. And now you start to ask the question, who's your guy at quarterback? And, you know, and I know Romero's making his first start tonight. Genty didn't sell you enough for you to name him the starter. Now you're back at square one where who is your quarterback if you're Doug Martin? Genty steps up. Nearly intercepted again. Chavez Pownell, one of the linebackers, also will play that nickelback position, and it's fourth down. Yeah, this secondary for Wyoming has suffocated. 
the wide receivers and running backs and just really haven't given them a lot of separation and space. And the way they've covered on the back end really allows that defensive line up front to work hand in hand with uh, the pressure. And now you get down the field coverage. This is why this defense becomes so dominant. Geisler, his 11th punt. Wow. This one sends Conway retreating. Conway from the 16. Moving in circles and finally lassoed to the ground. All that for about a one yard return. Nico Evans, 190 yards rushing for Wyoming. A couple of touchdowns on just 24 carries. A fifth year senior finally getting a chance to start and be the guy. And boy, has he seized the moment. Well, yards after contact, that's been the story of the day. This young man, when he has been contacted, has done a great job with his pad level, giving you all the hard spots to hit, the helmet, the shoulder pads, the knees. And because of that, he's really been able to drive through wimpy and would-be tacklers. But it's the yards after contact that I've been impressed with and his ability to run through those. Nick Smith, the backup quarterback in for Wyoming, and he hands it off to Xavier Valade, who picks up a first down. Guys, when you talk about Evans, with a running back, the first thing that has to come before any of the ability is the mentality. And I think this coaching staff saw that when Nico Evans went up to the coaches and said, what do I need to do to be the guy? And we talked about that earlier, but that mentality of I want to be the guy, I want to be that guy that's seven yards deep, taking handoffs, punishing defenders, that starts in the offseason. Nico Evans showed it then, and it has paid dividends. If they get him one more carry, he might go over 200. Now, right now, you got to feel a little for this New Mexico State defense. They've been on the field for almost 40 minutes now. And, and they're gassed. Yeah, and this is the wrong offense to be in this type of situation with because this is what they do. They grind you down, and now uh, w once you start getting into what you would call your four-minute offense where you're trying to milk the clock, run out the clock, and, and leave here with a victory, uh, they're, they're effective and efficient at this, and they've continued to do it for sure. Hey, uh, Alex, start off in there. Second and four after a six-yard game. Jalen Watson, the fullback. Smith, the backup QB, hands it off. Valaday against this tired defense, able to move the chains. Ron LaForce, Sunbelt Conference newcomer of the year, stop. I'm back to Nico Evans for a minute. He entered the game with 108 career rushing yards <laughs> and has almost doubled that in one night. And what a great night for this young man. And he's a fifth-year senior. Uh, yeah, what a great night. And, and he's, he's clearly become one of the leaders on this offense. And, and I think also what's helped him tonight is Tyler Vanderwall. Um, and we talked about the hidden gems that Greg Ball's been able to find. This kid didn't even play football his junior year because of the transfer and thought he was only going to miss a couple games and now finds himself the starting quarterback of the Wyoming Cowboys. And so I think it's been a combination of things, but Craig Ball was very adamant about telling us that this running game had to improve. Now, we talked about it. They shuffled offensive line around last year. They feel comfortable with this group, but tonight they've come out here and established the ground game, and that opens up everything else for the Cowboys. And we're going to find out more, Roddy. Again, early in the season, you're never quite sure how much carries over for teams from last year to this yep. year. So maybe New Mexico State has a regression. Maybe they're not as good as the team that went bowling a year ago. But the next couple of games for Wyoming, they've got Washington State, they've got Missouri. We're going to find out about, one, how this defense is going to stack up against two really, really good offenses. And then, offensively, can they do some of the same stuff that they were doing tonight? I think that's going to be the question, the offensive side. I think this defense is going to be fine against anybody. Yeah, they're going to give up some points against an explosive uh, uh, Missouri offense. The Drew Lockett quarterback is one of the best in the country. So they're going to give up some yards, maybe some points, but they're going to hold up fine. It's going to be on this offense. What happens when they're not able to get the running game going? What happens if, if early in the game they're a little frustrated, they turn the ball over? How will they respond then? That's going to be the big question. On third down, Valaday with a first down and more. And into Aggie territory, we've got a fallen ref who got bulldozed. It's been that kind of ground game for Wyoming tonight. More than 300 rush yards and 
Uh, you look at the trajectory of what Craig Bull has done. Two years ago, uh, they could score with anybody. They just couldn't play any defense. Last year, even with Josh Allen, the offense ranked 125th in the country, but their defense kept them in most games. What Craig Bull said to us this year, he finally feels he has that right balance yeah. between offense and defense. He also spoke directly to the mentality of this team. I asked him, I said, do you believe this team carries that championship swagger? And he said, yeah, I think we're on pace to do, to do just exactly that. Now it's about doing what they did tonight. They came out here, both sides of the ball performed well. Um, they, were, they were excellent with their ground game. The defense was spectacular. And it appears as though they may leave here tonight with a, with a shutout. Timeout by New Mexico State. Wyoming, five minutes away from pitching a shutout in its season opener. Store glories of the past. Miami coming off a 10 win season. Ed Ogeron looking to continue to get LSU back to where it was. On second and 10, Nick Smith, the backup quarterback, in for Wyoming. We've got a 29 0 lead, and the handoff is to Valaday. He picks up a yard, third down and long. Leon McQuaker, MVP of the Arizona ball, on the stop. Karate, I don't want to make too much of one game because, again, you know, you're never quite sure how good a team is when you haven't seen everybody else and you haven't seen the season play out. But a statement performance like this by Wyoming, you play. What's the impact of this going forward? Well, uh, it validates what you've been doing all offseason. It gives you that confidence boost that, hey, this work that we've been putting on in the offseason has paid off. And what we're doing, we're doing the right things. But there's enough here for the coaches to pick at without continuing to get better. That pass too high for Harshman fourth down. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And I'll use a track analogy here. It's like getting out of the blocks fast, right? It, it, People who are sprinters, they work on coming out of the blocks wide because it gives you an edge. And the confidence that Roddy talked about, I remember when I played at the University of Texas, our number one goal every year under Mac Brown was to win the opener. And for that reason, it was because, as Roddy said, it validates what you've done in the offseason, but it also gets you off to a great start. And with a front-loaded schedule for Wyoming, this is the perfect uh, amount of confidence they need to head in there, believing that they're clicking on all cylinders early in the year. Yeah, they don't really have time. They want to dream big this year and set it into a groove. And Zaleski's punt goes out of bounds inside the 10. Ahmad, you alluded to that front-loaded schedule for Wyoming. Next two weeks, Wazoo and then to Columbia to take on Missouri. And then after a bye week, Boise State. You want to back up the talk that you were throwing out earlier, well, hey, win the Mountain West, maybe go to a, a New Year's Six Bowl. Well, you're going to have to beat Boise. And you look at Washington State and Missouri, two big carrots, power five schools on the ledger. Uh, the, the hard part of your season is all before October 1st. Yeah, you're right. And But I think if they could do what they did against Iowa last year, oh, near inception there. Matt Romero back into the game for New Mexico State. If they can do what they did last year in Iowa, where it came down, I and mean, they were in the football game, I think it also adds confidence. And then here, you get Boise State and Utah State at home. I mean, that schedule, that schedule is favorable, especially when you consider that offenses, when you're at home, defenses get that crowd noise, they get that juice, they get that energy that comes along with trying to disrupt offenses. And, and with this kind of defense, you get, you get them, you know, Fired up in Laramie, which I'm sure they are right now watching this performance. I, I do believe that this could be the difference, and this could be the year that they finally get over that hump and they they, hold, they hoist the trophy at the end of the year. Third and one after a nine-yard game by Boone. Now Huntley breaking a couple of tackles, moving the chains. New Mexico State has yet to reach midfield. Aggies have not been shut out since 2011. That was a 44-0 loss to Louisiana Tech. Romero has to check down. That's Huntley. The speedster from Arlington has not really had too much room to run tonight. Second down. Out for New Mexico State with the Sun Belt and no longer providing conference cover. They're an independent now. They've got a quirky schedule. They play Liberty twice. A home and home. 
that's boom. Next year, they've got money games on the schedule with Alabama and Ole Miss. But when you look at New Mexico State's schedule this year, there are, let's say, at least six, seven winnable games where they won't be bowl eligible. Now, they don't have that bowl tie-in because they're not in the Sun Belt, but they should have a chance to have a winning season if they can be close to what they were last year. As Romero scrambles around and gets crushed at the 35-yard line. Second down, Kevin Prosser on the stop. I agree with you, Anish, and, 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 I, and I think as you, as you glance over the schedule, it, this team can, I, I believe, can be in games that maybe they wouldn't have been in two years ago, but not only that, now you really start to understand where your program's at if you are winning the games you're supposed to. And you need to win those in a fashion that lets everybody else know you've improved. Third down. Well, the turnaround time for New Mexico State from here is quick. They, they need a, a defensive back's memory. They've got Minnesota <laughs> on the road this Thursday. You're right. Short memory indeed because, you know, now you don't have time to lick your wounds. You know, you start tomorrow, you put this puppy to rest in the morning, and you get right back in the weight room with Don Decker and you get back in there with your coaches and you get after it because if you let this game, if you, if you sulk around, you're going to let this game beat you twice. Romero, who's back in, finds his receiver, Drew Dan, and for the first time tonight, the Aggies have crossed midfield. Some of the best throws I've seen him make tonight have been on the move, whether that's been forced or whatever the case may be. If I'm Doug Martin, I seriously take a look moving forward on trying to move the pocket with Romero, take advantage of his athleticism, and especially against a dominant defensive line uh, like the Cowboys have. That was the longest play of the game for the Aggies, a game of 30. Jake Clark on that far sideline for his fifth catch. Final 90 seconds plus. College football's back, fellas. Oh, yeah. It's about time. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes, it is. Romero steps up looking for six. And New Mexico State is on the board. Drew Dan who had the 30-yard catch earlier on this drive. And I don't want to take away any steam from the Aggies and the Aggies fans here, but, you know, most of Wyoming's backups are out on the field, and they took advantage there of Jelani Ellison, young man out of Rosada, California. And that was a nicely thrown ball there from Romero. And what has mostly been a lost evening for New Mexico State. A little glimmer toward the end. A little something to take into Thursday's game against Minnesota. Romero, his first TD pass as an Aggie. Drew Dan with his first touchdown catch as an Aggie. Game and a punishing defense. And you know what? That's striking. After this kickoff, he's going to go retrieve the tee. Look how ready he is. Oh, I love it. I mean, he knows this is his moment. I'm waiting for it. I've been waiting for it all day. Now here there comes he striking. Oh, yes. There he goes. I mean, he's got it. And, uh, he's taking his time. He's chewing on it. <laughs> Guys, there was no one more excited to see that touchdown than striking. I mean, he was licking his I mean, chops to get at that tee. That, is that, that was also New Mexico State's longest run of the evening. <laughs> But you're right. <laughs> I, I, can, can I take him home with me? Uh, America oh, loves puppies. Darn it. God, I've spent some time with him. He is a good boy. I'll tell you that. <laughs> he loves the pets behind the ear. He's a good boy, man. <laughs> oh, boy. It's the best part about owning a dog. Who, who does little moments and who savors the small things in life more than a dog? Very much so. I mean, did you see how Very excited he was? So. This, is a, this is a blowout game. It's all over. 29 to 7. And he was chomping at the bit just to get another chance. That's a lesson for everybody, <laughs> all of us, everybody watching. Oh, boy. You now the small moments make life. Well stated, my friend, well stated. Give that dog a few puppy treats. <laughs> Victory, Victory formation. Victory formation. Yeah. Wow. 
Wyoming will take a knee. 313 rushing yards. They held New Mexico State to just 135, and a lot of those came when the game was already over. Craig Bull and Doug Martin share some words. An impressive opening salvo by the Cowboys. They've got a couple of big tests coming up with Washington State and then a road game against Missouri. And uh, for Doug Martin's team, you've got to erase this, clear the browser, and get ready for Minnesota this Thursday. Yeah, it's, it's time, and, you know, and there's still some...